Okay, I'm back. Uh, three times. <laughs> I'll just wait a few more minutes. So, hello. I'm so I'm sorry. I I tried three times. This is my third time. Um. The the Wi-Fi seems to be better now. I think I had too many things open opened on my phone. But anyways, okay, thank you. Now it's okay. So, like I was saying before, I got the amplified version, and because I, I like the way that it sounds, it, it goes more, it, it breaks down the words better, just to get a, get, a, get a better idea of what it might be saying. And so, um, we're gonna read the beat attitudes, um, and honestly, I, this wasn't planned. Like, we were reading the rest of the book of Leviticus. We went through the laws. And towards the end, which is interesting, because if you look at the seven churches, they're being rebuked. And judgment happens in the house of God first, you know? And, and I feel like what the Holy Spirit is giving me and, and for me to share is what's really happening in real time. I believe that churches are being rebuked, corrected, um, and he rebukes those he loves. So when you, when you look at, um, when you look at uh, the book of Leviticus, it has the laws, it corrects you, it trains you, it gets you ready for the kingdom. And now we're at blessings. So for those who are overcoming, those who have truly repented with full remorse in their hearts, you know, they get blessings. You know, Jesus promises gifts. Um, but we shouldn't be doing things just to get something in return. We should be truly doing things out of love. So, um, we're going to go into B Attitudes chapter 5. And I'm going to read from the Amplified version. And let me know what you think. Because the Amplified version, it's, it, ha it, it, it seems like they just break down the words... A little bit better. I'm still getting used to it because I'm used to my NIV. I did like the King James Version, um, but I, I do like reading from different versions every now and then just to, you know, sometimes how things are worded differently can hit somebody, you know, or miss somebody. So um, let, let me know how you feel when I read, um, read from the Amplified Version. So, um, chapter 5 in Matthew. Seeing the crowd, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed, happy to be envied, and spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction, uh, satisfaction in God's favor and salvation regardless of their outward condition are the poor in spirit the humble who rate themselves insignificant for theirs is the kingdom of heaven so it just breaks down what is uh, the poor in spirit uh, those who are actually um, you know Jesus when he says blessed he's saying happy to be envied uh, um, and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation regardless of their outward condition um, are the poor in spirit, the humble who rate themselves insignificant for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now the fourth one is blessed, um, blessed and in, in, um, in, uh, in, in, uh, I can't say this word, inventorily happy with a happiness produced by the experience of God's favor, especially conditioned by the revelation of matchless grace. I really love that. Uh, the revelation of matchless grace. 
are those who are mourn, for they shall be comforted. And as I was reading this, um, it, it has a reference verse um, Isaiah 61 2. So we're going to look at that. Isaiah 61 2. So the B attitudes are the prophet spoke and also uh, in David, David's uh, Psalms. We're going to look at that. Um, so blessings are being poured out um, when you're repenting and you're turning. There's an outpouring of blessings, and I believe that we're in this time frame. I believe that the correction of the churches are happening now, and those who are returning, those who are repenting, um, their gowns are being cleansed, and an outpouring of blessings happening. So, Ezekiel, I mean, um, Isaiah, and notice how a lot of people before... Mm -hmm. Like in the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people were getting dreams and visions, and some people are still having them. They're having dreams and visions. And the prophets, you know, also had dreams and visions, and they pleaded with the people to repent and turn. Now, there was only a few people who actually repented and turned, and they were, they were um, exiled. So you see, it's parallel, and it, everything is lining up. Everything is lining up. Jesus' return, it could, it could be any day. Literally, it could be any day. So in Isaiah 61-2, uh, says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the, the, the year of His favor. Now, we were reading this about, about this yesterday. The Lord's year, His favor. And then we're in a jubilee's year, and the law and the jubilee's law is to buy back the land that is rightfully yours, you know. And the family who are basically in exile, just say that we're, you know, the family is scattered, goes back to their family during this year. Um. So. Let me read this again. To proclaim the year, the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to uh, comfort all who mourn. So Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comfort. In Isaiah, here's a beatitude. It says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And let's look at those cross-reference uh, scriptures, which is Matthew 11, uh, uh, 2 through 6. So, Matthew 11, 2 through 6. Matthew 11, 2 through 6. So, John... Now John was in prison, and he heard about um, activities of Christ, and he sent a message by his disciples, and asked him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we keep on expecting a different one? And Jesus replied to them, Go and report to John what you have seen, what you have seen, um, and the blind receive their sight. And the lame walk, leopards are cleansed by healing, and the death uh, hear, and the death the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news, the gospel preached to them. So we were just reading this, I think, yesterday too, um, and this is from the Amplified version, and I really like, I just really like how the words are laid out so far. You know, this is the first time. Well, no, I've been reading it for a couple of days. And I like how it's worded. I'm still used to my NIV, but I'm going to continue. Um, so, we saw a blessing, those who mourn. This is in Isaiah. So, Jesus, when he was speaking, when he was speaking at the uh, of the Beatitudes, they're all over the place. Um, so, cha uh, chapter 5, 
verse 5, blessed, happy, billisome, joyful, spiritual, prosperous, with joy, life, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward condition, are the meek, the mild, patient, long-suffering, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. This is also in Psalms 37.11, so let's take a look at that really quick. Psalms 37.11. Now this is all new to me. I had no idea. So this is really beautiful. So um, Psalms 37.11, uh, you know, here Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, 5, He's saying, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And then you go in Psalms 37, 11, and what is David saying? Uh, he's saying, um, he says, but the meek in the end uh, shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Also, you can see this in uh, Psalms 37, 29 which is um, 29, where did I see that, 29, then they constantly righteous shall inherit, so then the, the, the consistently, the consistently, the word says consistently, uh, righteous shall inherit the earth, the land, and dwell upon mm -hmm. it, so there's some people who change their lives, right? They change their lives for a little bit, and then they go back into and um, you know go back into their old ways. Um, you remember that parable that Jesus spoke about the uh, the unmerciful servant, and also um, to always be on guard. You know, we have to be consistently. So I'm going to read this again. This is an amplified version. Um, Psalms. 37, um, 29, it says, Then the consistently righteous shall, uh, shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Um, so that is the, those who are meek. Okay, so now we're going to move to um, Blessed are um, It says, Blessed are fortunate and be happy and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Um, standing with God uh, for they shall be completely satisfied. So uprightness so it means like uprightness um, and right standing with God. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and uh, be standing with God, for they shall be completely satisfied. So this one is also, this one is also in uh, Isaiah 55, 1. So I'm going to look at, into that. What? What's the definition of meek in the uh, biblical terms? That's that's a that's a great question, and if anybody has the answer to that, you know you can write that you know down below. I don't have a dictionary on me right now. My I'm using my charger for my laptop for my phone right now. So. So righteousness, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, this is in um, also in Isaiah 55, 1. So we're going to look at that, Isaiah 55, 1. I had no idea that these Beatitudes are everywhere. So Isaiah 55, 1.
55 1 and it says wait and listen everyone who is thirsty come to the waters and he who has no money come by eat yes come by priceless spiritual wine and milk I really love how that sounds yes come and buy spiritual uh, priceless priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price simply for self uh, surrender self surrender um, that accepts the blessings and this is also in Revelation so we're gonna go and look look Revelation 21 6 so let's look at that we're gonna be we're all over the place uh, Revelation 21 No more borders, guys. No more division. Like, the whole Bible is speaking to us right now. Um, Revelation 21. six. So let's look at that. Revelation 21.6. And he of the seven angels uh, further said to me, these statements are uh, reliable, uh, worthy of confidence and genuinely true. Uh, and the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets has set his men sent his messengers, angels to make known and um, exhibit it to his servants what must soon come um, did I get that right 21 21 6 right 21 oh no I read from two I'm sorry that was that was 22 okay so 21 6 and he further said to me it is done I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end this is confirmation like what this is confirmation that we're living in the last days we were just reading about this yesterday and i did not plan any of this you know i didn't this the holy spirit is bringing me all over the place talking to me telling me what what kind what time we're living in <laughs> okay so revelation 21 6 and he further said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I myself will give water without price from the foundation, springs of water of life. So we just saw that in Isaiah 55, 1. And then Jesus saying in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. So Isaiah um, 55, 1, Revelation 21, 6, and Matthew chapter 5, I think verse 5. So three confirmation, you know, three verses to confirm that, you know. This is the times we're living in. Okay. So it's also in Revelations 22, 17. So let's look at that too. Revelations, then we got a fourth one. Okay, Revelations um, 22, 22, 17. And it says, The Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, the true Christians. Now I really like the way that sounds. The true Christians. Everybody says I'm a Christian, but, you know, the demons believe, you know, the demons believe. Uh, today, this morning in my study, I was reading the Amplified version of uh, the story of uh, Lazarus. So if we have time, we're going to read a little bit about that in the, in the Amplified version. And I really liked how it breaked it down with faith, you know, so we're going to look into that if we have time. So the Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, the true Christians say, come and let him who is listening say, come and let everyone come who is thirsty, who is painfully uh, 
conscious of his need. Painfully conscious of his need. Like, this is a desperation. This is a hunger, a thirst. You know, can't live without Christ. Like, this is what I was... I broke down yesterday. This is what I was talking about with my husband. When I go to work, I'm like... I don't know. I... I feel the evil in this world and sometimes I get overtaken by it and I fall into it and I'm trying not to fall into the patterns of the world, you know, I'm trying to be transformed and be renewed and sometimes I, a lot of times I'm falling short of the glory and I told my husband, I don't even care at this point, this is not going to, this job is not going to come between my relationship that I have with Christ, if this job is going to uh, you know, take all of the tension and, 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 and make it the center, I'm out of here, you know, I'm done. I don't know if you guys are dealing with this at your job places, but this, this is like at an all time worst, like at, that it's ever been, you know, people are m more rude, uh, not patient, not kind, and um, Jesus said this, all, all this would happen. People will be lovers of themselves. You know, I work in the public and I deal with, you know, customer service and customers literally don't even say hello, how are you? Uh, they just bark orders um, and they think the world revolves around them. Lovers of themselves, conceited. You know, Jesus said this too, they'll be conceited. Um, and I know sometimes I could fall into that. Um, and I, I repent for that. But the thing is, these people don't have any remorse. That's the thing. Most of these people don't have remorse. They truly feel entitled. And they truly feel uh, that they're right and you're wrong. And I just broke down. I mean, when I'm at work, I feel so far away from the Lord and it, it destroys me. I literally have to run somewhere and pour my heart before him. At my job, sometimes I have to go run in the freezer or run in the bathroom and just pray to the Lord, please help me. This is getting way too crazy here. And I'm trying to keep my cool, you know? And I'm sure that maybe some of you guys are too. Um, but this is the kind we have to be desperate for the Lord. It says that um, right here in the Amplified Version, the emotion. That's why I think I like it because there is some emotion, compassion, showing some sort of like feeling, you know. Um, here it says the, the Holy Spirit and the bride, the, the church, the true Christians say come and let him who is listening say come and let everyone come who is thirsty, who is painfully, painfully conscious of his need of those things by which the soul is refreshed i'm aware that when i'm away from christ i don't feel great i feel very distraught and very uh, easily angered like out of i don't feel like comfortable but in christ i feel comfortable i feel at peace i feel at rest in this world it's true. They have many. They have many worries of this life. So, when we read this, these are things that we can actually pray about. Like when we see, this is where we are at in our relationship. We write this down and we pray about it later in our private time. You know. So, you know, who is painfully conscious of his need of those things by which the soul refreshed supported and strengthened that's the last strengthen and whoever earnestly desires to do it let him come and take appropriate um appropriate and drink the water of life without cost so you see jesus is the living waters jesus is the tree of life Jesus is everything. Like for a while, uh, the Holy Spirit had me focus on trees for a little bit. Uh, the the cedar tree, um, the the tree of Lebanon, the tree 
is this tall tree. Uh, I can't imagine back then the trees were probably much taller than they are today. You know, much healthier, you know. As time goes on, as we move further and further away from the Garden of Eden, that, 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 that original state, the more deficient we become spiritually and the things around us are the the things around us are deficient we need christ we need to be with our lord and savior the the further we are away from christ the more uh things get more um out of control and things become deficient you know our bodies are becoming more deficient most people have vitamin d deficient you know deficient deficiency today because of the lack of sunlight, you know? But I think it's much more. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And the more further away we get from our Savior, the more deficient we get, you know? So that we should be like the woman with the issue of blood, where she was pushing her way through the crowd just to get, just to touch the hem of his garment. And the man who was crippled, where the dis... Um, the people who were carrying him literally bust in the stranger's ha you know roof. They didn't care. They were desperate for Jesus Christ. They didn't care um, how much the roof cost. They just, they just did it. You know, they just went after him. So those are. That's an example of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now my question is for you, and we have to really ask our ourselves this do we have a hunger and thirst for righteousness and if we do not if we're not then we have to pray to have that hunger back you know if we once had that hunger and we don't have that anymore then we have to pray for to have that hunger back again so let's go back to the beatitudes and um well We'll reread that one. That was uh, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprighteousness, and right standing with God. Excuse me. For they shall be completely satisfied. Okay, blessed, happy, to be envied, uh, and spiritually prosper, uh, prosperous with life, joy, satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of the outward conditions, are the merciful, for they, should, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed, happy, um, inevitably, and I always have trouble saying that word, uh, fortunate and spiritually prosperous, uh, possessing the happiness produced by the exper um, experience of God's favor, and especially uh, conditioned by the revelation of His grace, uh, grace regar uh, regardless of their outward condition. So, I really like how the Amplified keeps saying, regardless of the outward condition because outwardly we all might look squeaky clean but inwardly we are a mess inwardly we have to deny ourselves fully there is a church from the outside who appears to be um, alive but Jesus says inward you are as good as dead and he says strengthen what remains it is about to die because you might look like you're alive on the outside, but inwardly you are as good as, um, you know, Jesus said, dead man's bones, you know, dead man's bones. So you're not fooling anyone if you're playing church and, or you're just, you know, looking from the outside like everything is all normal, but inside you're as good as dead. That's, you're not fooling anyone. So you know, you know, purchase, purchase, eat the, the, the hidden manna, which is the word of God. You know, I've learned and, you know, these gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us 
you know, Jesus gives us in the book of Revelation for those who are becoming is in the word of God, you know? So regardless of their outward condition are the pure, the pure in heart for they shall see God. So the pure in heart is also in Psalms uh, 40, uh, 24, 3. So we're going to look at that. Now David says a lot about the heart. And the heart, you know, Jesus says that this is the, all the evil, that these things come from the heart, you know? And so we really have to look at our heart intentions out of things, you know? And if you really look at it carefully, you will see that we're all selfish. We all have some kind of selfish ambition and all our ways are wrong and all of God's ways are right. That's what you'll learn. Like there, there is no one that has a good heart. Everybody has something evil in their heart. And we're told to deny ourselves and take up our cross to put down our pride you know to be humble because he is humble so in psalms uh 24 we're gonna see that blessed are those who are pure in heart for they shall see god i want to see god so pure um a pure heart i would say is somebody who is really being humbled you know, be, you know, being humbled in the heart, being gentle in the heart, denying themselves in the heart, that's being pure, um, and letting Christ purify your heart too, Notice, noticing that your heart is evil, like David, you know, God said that David was a man after his heart, so we should be like David in a way, after God's heart, By the way, um, like I've been sharing, on the weekend we're reading um, Samuel. Tomor that's tomorrow, Saturday. God willing, I'll come back on here and we'll, we'll read Samuel. Um, we're still in 1 Samuel. I've already read 2 Samuel. Um, and then after that, I would like to get into the book of Psalms with you guys, if that's okay with you guys. I would like to get into the book of Psalms and really read David's prayers because I bet you, well, a lot of them are prophetic, you know? And so we're going to look at, at that too. So back to what I was saying before, uh, Psalms 24-3. Uh, 24-3. And it says, Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy presence, uh, stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted himself up to falsehood. Now, I love this translation of this right here. Who has not lifted himself up to falsehood or to what is false, nor sworn deceitfully. And this is Matthew so, this is um, Psalms 24, verse 4, and Matthew 5, 8. So, when Jesus said, Blessed are those who are pure in heart, he was talking about this psalm right here. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted himself um, up to falsehood or to what is false, nor sworn de deceitfully, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. And this is the generation uh, description of those who seek him. This is the de this is the generation this is the generation I believe I that will seek him. Um, I lost my I lost my uh, okay there it is. Uh, of those who seek him who uh, inquire of him of and for him and of uh, necessity require him uh, who seek your face O God O God of Jacob 
pause and think of that. Oh God of Jacob and, and pause and think of it. So the, it's just saying pause and think about it. Uh, and then there's a cross, cross res, reference here. 42, 1. Let's just take a look. 42, 1. So as, as the heart paints, so as the heart paints and longs for the water bricks, brooks, so I paint and long for you, O God. This is the kind of purity in the heart, longing for God, you know, um, wait, like waiting on the Lord. We're, wait, we're truly are waiting for his return. Let me keep reading this. So, um, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted, you age-binding doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord and mighty, the, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, yes, lift them up, you age-binding doors, that the King of the glory may come in. Who is he then, the King of glory, the Lord of hosts? He is the King of glory. And then you just like pause and think about that. <laughs> yeah, I really like the audible. It, you should be pausing and thinking about it. When you read scripture, you should pause and, and think about it, reflect on it. So going further, blessed, enjoyed, in, inevitable, happiness, spiritual, prosperous, with life, a uh, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions, are, are makers and maintainers of peace. Now, I like how that says that in this translation. In, in the NIV, it says, blessed are those who make peace, for they shall have peace. But I like how the Amplify breaks it down. It says, maintainers so yes, you can make peace, you can make peace really quick, but are you maintaining the peace? That is the key here. We should maintain peace. Keeping the peace. Ooh, it is actually really cold in here today. <laughs> um, yeah, so man maintaining peace, you know, blessed are those who are pure and... Uh, Blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they shall have peace. But here it says, Are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed and happy and in, in, uh, inevitable, fortunate, and spiritually uh, prosperous in the state in which the born-again child of God enjoys and finds satisfaction in God's favor, salvation regardless of the outward conditions, are those who per are persecuted for righteousness sake, for being and doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of God uh, of heaven. So I really like how that breaks it down to persecution. Anyone who is doing right, you know, anyone who is doing right by the Lord being persecuted. Because there's, there's different types of persecution. You know, there's a persecution by death, but there's also persecution where people come and mock and scoff you. Um, you know, they try, to, they try to steal the word, the joy from your heart. You know, what is worse, a physical death or a spiritual death? Some people uh, will have mockers and scoff come. I and mean, this is what we have to pray for the, uh, believers. They'll have mockers and uh, scoffers come. And they literally get so discouraged after whatever they say where they stop seeking the Lord. And this is why we have to pray for all the believers who are facing any kind of persecution. You know? And we're reading from uh, Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes. And I'm reading from the Amplify version. I really like how it, it breaks it down into an emotion, uh, you know, more in the heart, you know. Um, so, okay, so in 11, so we're at 11 now, 
blessed, happy, to be envied, and spiritually prosperous with uh, life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of our outward uh, conditions. And it keeps saying, regardless of the outward conditions, because the Sadducees and Pharisees were very focused on outward cleansing. So I like how the Amplified Version keeps saying that, regardless of outward conditions. They're, he's, they're breaking down it to, to a heart thing, you know, it's a heart thing. Um, and are you, when people rev, uh, revile and, uh, you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account, be glad, some pre, some pre, um, supremely joyful, be glad and be supremely joyful. For your reward in heaven is great, strong and intense. That it goes into an emotion, you know. That's what I like. I like about this uh, translation so far. You know, it's there's emotions with it. With this, um, okay. Where I lost my spot. So are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account? Jesus is, Jesus is saying, be glad and be supremely joyful for your reward is heaven. In heaven is great, strongly and intense. And for in the same way, people persecute persecuted the prophets who were before you. So... This is also mentioned in 2 Chronicles. So this B attitude is in 2 Chronicles um, 36, 12. So let's take a look at that. 2 Chronicles. Who would have known? I did not know the B attitudes were all over the place like this. So 2 Chronicles 30, um, 36. If you want to look with me. Uh, 36. Thirty-six, sixteen. So it says, but they keep mocking. So they keep mocking. Like I was just saying before, persecution can come in so, so many different forms. Um, persecution, the goal is to get you to die. So some, pe some people will come up on here sometimes and say terrible things. Some people will come up here and say terrible things to try to, to steal the word and to put you to death spiritually. So here in um, 2 Chronicles 36, um, uh, 16, it says, But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his... Uh, words and scoffing at his prophets till the wrath of the Lord rose against his people till they uh, there was no remedy or or uh, or healing so absolutely amazing everywhere so you are the salt of the earth so when Jesus is after he's saying the Beatitudes he's reminding how precious you really are to him. Like, Jesus is not only asking us to repent and to turn to him, to, to, to be cleansed in him, but he's also sharing things from his heart and how he feels about us. He, we're the salt of the earth, you know? Um, so let's read that. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality. How can its saltiness, so when the salt, if it loses its taste or quality, you know, God has a purpose for everyone. His word does not come back void. His rain falls on the righteous and unrighteous. He has you where you are at for a reason. We may not understand. So, um, let, let us not lose the, the, the quality 
of the salty, like what we've received in the spirit, you know, for that one church, um, wake up, you know, strengthen what remains and is about to die. Do not lose that quality, that the quality of your saltiness. Um, it's strength is quality how can its saltiness be restored it is no good not good for anything any longer but to be thrown out and uh trod underfoot by men you are the light of the world a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden nor do men light a lamp and put it under a um a peck measure um but on a lampstand and it gives light to the to um, all in the house so let your light shine so before men that they may see your moral so I love how this breaks it down let, so let them see your moral moral excellence and your praiseworthy uh, noble and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise and glorify your father who is in heaven so this is really beautiful. This is really beautiful. So, um, I don't know uh, if you're speaking in a different language. Uh, I'm just trying to read what you wrote. Um, but I really love how it, Jesus well, how the Amplified Version breaks it down, the words better into an emotion. Um, let your light so shine before men that you may see your moral excellence and your praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise and glory your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to do away or undo the law. So even in the Amplified Version, the NI Version, the King James Version, all the versions um, of the Bible, Jesus is saying the same thing. Do not think I come to undo the law or the prophets. I have not uh, come not to do away or undo, but to complete and fulfill them. Now, going further, Jesus says, until heaven and earth pass away, the law still stands. And by the way, there's a law in heaven. There's a law in heaven, and that is why a third of the angels were casted down for rebellion against the law in heaven. They knew better. We didn't have a law until later on, Moses. Then it was written. Then there was a law. And those who fall short of the glory and do not repent, they fall under the curse of the law. The wages of sin is death, right? That is the law. And if you are living in sin and without repenting, you are under the curse of the law. But truly, I tell you, until the sky and earth passed away and perished, not one small letter nor one little hook um, in defying certain Hebrew letters will pass from the law until all things uh, it foreshadows are completed. So all things that it foreshadows is completed. There is the festivals are still, they still have things to be fulfilled. Like Jesus Christ still has to come back. And whoever then breaks or does away or with or relaxes, okay? Anyone who, who breaks or does away or relaxes one of the least um, important of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called the least important in the kingdom of heaven. So those who say we don't longer observe the Sabbath, really think about that because what Jesus is saying here, there is still, it has to come to its full fulfillment. Heaven and earth is still standing. The law is in heaven Everything is a shadow of heaven, and until these things pass, these things still stand, and which will always stand, I believe. 
for eternity. That's, you know, I believe that when we have the new heaven, new earth, everything that the Lord has already given us, it will will be. But everybody will be um, one in spirit. You know. Okay, so but he who practices them, practices them, and teaches others to do so shall be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't know about you, I would like to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You know, I don't want to be called the least. Um, and Jesus is saying, if you say it, teach from the least of these commands, you would be called the least. You know. For I tell you, unless your righteousness, your uprightness, and your right standing with God is more than that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven unless your righteousness surpasses. And through Christ, that is where we attain righteousness, but we're told to follow him, his decrees, you know. And, and to deny ourselves. Okay, so you have heard that it was said to the old, the men of old, you shall not kill. And whoever kills shall be um, a liable to and unable to escape the punishment um, imposed by the court. And then we can see this also in Deuter uh, Exodus 20:13, Deuteronomy 5:17, and 16 and 18. But I say to you that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice and um, an enemy of um, heart against him shall be um, liable to and unable to escape the punishment imposed by the court. And whoever speaks... Um, uh, contemptuously and insulting to his brother shall be uh, liable and unable to escape the punishment um, by the Sanhedrin. Um, and whoever says, You cursed and fool, you empty uh, headed idiot, uh, shall be uh, liable to and unable to escape the hell. Uh, uh, Gehenna, Ge Ge Gehenna. I think that's how you say. It. Jesus said Gehenna, um, which basically, back then, was the dump. You know, and Jesus kept referring the hell as Gehenna. You know, of fire. So if you, if, when you are offering your gift at the altar, and uh, you there remember that your brother has any grievance against you leave your gift at the altar and go first make peace with your brother and then come back and, and uh, present your gift come to terms quickly with your accuser come to terms quickly with your accuser um, first make peace with your brother and then make uh, come back and present your gifts come to terms quickly with your accusers while you are on the way traveling with him least your accuser handed you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and uh, you be put in prison so when I read this we should really be clearing our conscience between each other the best that we can if we see that someone's like really bothering us in some kind of way um, instead of you know harboring that those feelings and then it turns into anger and then it turns to bitterness and rage against this person um we should clear our conscience and get that off of our chest you know um truly i tell you uh you will be released until you have paid the least uh faction of a of it a, a fraction of a penny uh you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery and you can see this in exodus 2014 and deuteronomy 5 18 jesus speaking in from the torah but i'd say to you that everyone who so much as look so not only is jesus talking about the law but he's also talking about 
what's going on in the heart you know yes we have new laws in our hearts and, our, and on our mind you know we have new you know the law is now on our heart and our mind but Jesus is also bringing this he's shedding this to light the physical law and also something going on in your heart you can't be doing these things in your heart you know so some people will say you know that we're under grace and mercy we are when we abide in him if we're not abiding in him then we're not under that we're under the curse of the law because we're rebelling and then the accuser is accusing us for rebelling you know job was a man who was righteous and held on to his integrity okay and god said that but uh the devil said to god that if you take his the hedge of protection if you take this away surely job will curse you but because job often got up early every morning to make sacrifices atonement for his sins and his family sin in god's eyes uh, Job was a man of integrity and of righteousness. So yes, we're now in um, Matthew chapter 5, um, 28. Um, but I say to you that everyone uh, who so much as look at a woman with evil desires for her has already committed adultery with her in her his heart. And by the way, the lusts of the flesh, you know, I have this verse in, uh, you know, mem I'm trying to memorize it, but John 2, 16, 17, for everything in this world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world, and the world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. Everything, the lust of the eyes, the pleasures of the flesh, is not from the Father. It's from the world, you know. And whoever does the will of God, you know, those, the, you know, if you do the 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 pleasures of the flesh, you will pass away. But whoever does the will of God, which is put to death, some of these sinful sinful natures you know like a lot of these things people say well these are not this is normal this is normal uh it's normal because you made it to be normal you know you normalized sin that's why you see it as normal because it's, it's now normal so we have to put to death sin deny ourselves and be in step in, in spirit you know on pentecost all the disciples were one in spirit. Um, even in the book of Samuel, John and um, Jonathan and David were one in spirit, you know. Um, and you will see this throughout the Old Testament going into the New Testament. When, when people of God come together, um, they forget, you know, they put aside all the worldly views and they become one in spirit. And things happen when that happens. When people put, away, put off these divisions put off these worldly views we become one in spirit and amazing things happen when we do these things when we put down these these uh these walls we put up a lot of these things are what the devil wants he wants the division so that we don't become one in spirit so um going further um but i say to you that everyone who is so who so much as look as a woman with evil desires for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart and if your right eye serves a trap and I really like how it says serves as a trap to ensnare you or is an occasion for you to stumble and sin pluck it out by the way Joseph uh, when you know Potiphar's wife I'm sure that he probably found her attractive um, was trying to uh, get with him he literally ran from her he avoided her if there is somebody who is you know that's all you think about when you're around them you need to flee resist the devil and he will flee 
Um, and the devil will use a person, you know, just to get you to fall into sin. So we have to be careful. I mean, I, you know, everybody has some sins they struggle with. You know, the lust of the eyes is a tricky one. Everybody, everybody goes through something. Even myself, you know, I have, you know, and, you know, the world will say it's normal. It's not normal. You know, it's normal because they have normalized sin and they want you to indulge in sin. Uh, they want you to treat yourself, you know. Take time. Like, I encourage you to take time not to watch secular TV for a while and not to listen to any kind of commercials for a while and then go ahead and listen to it. The, these commercials and television is literally trying to make you lovers of yourself. You only think about yourself indulge yourself, treat yourself. Um, this is a product you can trust, you know, with a hundred percent guarantee or your money back. You know, it, you keep listening to this over and over and over again. You begin to trust their products and yourself and you lose sight on God. I'm telling you a lot of these, this is the beast system. It's to keep you locked in this world, you know, Jesus came to free you, to free you in your mind. And a lot of these things keep you consumed as a consumer. They want you to buy and consume, you know. And I, I just watch, watch uh, Christian entertainment, uh, YouTube videos every now and then. But I have to watch it with caution because, you know, I could be watching somebody and I really like what they say. But then later on, someone you know, does a video and exposes them as a false teacher. And it's, it's crazy. You know, the sheep, the, the sheeps and wolf clothing is, the deception is becoming more and more and more. And, um, we, that's why we need to pray for discernment, you know, so that we can see things clearly. Cause when we don't see something, somebody else sees something and they point it out and you're like, Oh wow. Good thing you pointed that out. I did not see that. Um, so, you know, going further, if your right eye strives a, as a trap to ensnare you or is an occasion for you to stumble and sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than one, uh, than that your whole body be cast into hell, uh, Gehenna. So... In, the, in this translation, it keeps saying Gehenna, which Jesus, like I was saying before, was the, was, it was the dump where people would throw their garbage. And back then, they used to burn the trash, you know. And um, Jesus often described hell. That is what hell is like, Gehenna, you know, the land of tra burning trash, you know. And... I don't want anybody to go there and I, we should be praying no, that no one shall perish. And every time I pray this, I feel the Holy Spirit because I know that this is not, he doesn't want anyone to perish. So we should pray that people would overcome, that would they, they would acknowledge God and repent and turn so that they don't get thrown into hell. Um, it is. It has also been said Whoever divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. Now, by the way, Jesus hated divorce. He absolutely hated divorce. You want to know why he hates divorce? Because he refers us to be his bride. And he asks us to be holy and pure. And he's faithful. And he expects us to be faithful, too, in return. He, the, he does not want us. He doesn't want a divorce. He doesn't want a divorce with us. He wants us to... Um, you know, renew our vows. If we're struggling in our faith, renew our vows to recommit ourselves to him. Um, so Jesus was against divorce, and I believe this is why. Because in the last days, there is churches where Christ is warning, and there are some who are not repenting and turning. And there are some who are actually take the mark of the beast and worship its image and the reason how I figured that out is because Jesus repeated the same sentence into one of the churches 
and I think Revelation 16 or 18, uh, where he says, I come like a thief. Blessed is one who uh, keeps their garments on, you know. Um, there's a church where he said the same, the same thing. And this is after they received the mark of the beast and worshiped the image. And the bowls are being poured out and the seven, the seven uh, plagues are being poured out um, in the book of Revelation. And, you know, he asks them to repent. Well, they, he doesn't even say, I ask you to repent. It says they repented not, which means they had an opportunity to repent and they refused. Um, they, had, they have spiritually signed a divorce paper. That's what I feel. I feel the Holy Spirit saying that. They have, they have chosen to be, to have a divorce and to marry Satan. That's where they, they have left, they have left their first love and cheated on the Lord, you know, uh, which is really sad. And we have to pray for that church. Uh, which church was that? The, this church now it's going to be interesting to see the amplified version in the book of Revelation it's going to be interesting so let's see um wow yeah it's going to be interesting to read see from the uh, I'm gonna actually look from the NIV so we went through all of the Beatitudes but now we're kind of like after Jesus gives the blessings he's giving corrections according to the law and talking about it in a spiritual way rather than like he's talking about the physical but also he says even if you have done it if you don't do it but you've already done it in your heart you've just as to have done it okay so this church revelation yes so in this church of revelation look uh Revelation chapter 3, and I'm actually, I want to read from the Amplified version. I really want to. So, let's look in the chapter 3. So, and to the angel, the messenger of the assembly church in Sardarius, write, these are the words of him who have the seven spirits of God, the seven folds holds uh, Holy Spirit, and the seven stars. I know your record and what you are doing. Um, you are supposed to be alive, but in reality you are dead. Rise yourself and keep awake and strengthen and in invigorate what remains and is about to be uh, is on the point of dying. For I have not found a thing that you have done, any of your works, it says, meeting the requirements of my God or his perfection in his sight. So, call to mind the lessons you have received and heard, and continually lay them to heart and obey them and repent, in case you will not uh, rouse yourself and keep awake and watch, I will come upon you like a thief, and you will not know or suspect what hour I come. Yet you still have a few persons, names in Sidarius, 
who have not soiled their clothes. And they shall walk with me in white because they are worthy and deserving. Soil, fall into sin. The wages of sin is death. Jesus cleans us when we, when we repent. This is a church who has received the Holy Spirit. You know, has been baptized, has been born again. You know, they defiled the, the holy sanctuary, their bodies. And Jesus is saying that uh, you have a repetition of being alive. But you are as, as good as dead man's bone. You know, according to my uh, NIV translation, as good as dead man's bones. You need to wake up and repent. So, you know, to that church. But, if you go to um, uh, Revelations chapter 18, you will hear Jesus say, I think it's 18 or it might be 16, um, saying the same exact sentence, and I believe this is that church, this church, it may not be the whole church, like there might be some people who actually repent, you know, have received the Holy Spirit, seems, seems alive on the outside, they're, they're like, uh, they do, they try to get approval by men, they're like the Sadducees and Pharisees, you know, they try to get approval by men, but in their heart, they're like the Sadducees and Pharisees, they're, they speak great words, but their hearts are from him. Um, some people in this church might take this into consideration and repent. And then there is some um, who may not. And Jesus literally repeats these words again in 16. Yes, it's sixteen fifteen. Behold, I am coming. Uh, I'm going to come like a thief. Blessed, happy to be envy is the he who stays awake, alert, and who has uh, guard his clothes. I like how that sounds. Guard his clothes. We're told to be on guard. Guard your clothes. Guard your garments. Keep yourself from falling. And and um, you know when you go out in the world, there's always dirt at the bottom of your shoes. Every time you go out, there's more dirt accumulating. Every, that, that's why, you know, when you're, even when you're out in the world, your hands, they get dirty. Eventually, you have to wash your hands, right? Same thing in Christ. When we go out in the world and we're doing things, you know, throughout the day, eventually we get dirty and we need to go to the Lord and repent. This church may also may not feel they need to repent anymore. They believe that we're under grace and mercy. And yes, we are, just as long as we stay in his grace and his mercy. If we do not keep ourselves, you know, uh, you know, keeping ourselves being sanctified and cleansed, then we are, you know, we are like filthy rags, you know. Um... So, uh, someone says, um, want to be seen of men? Let me see, hold a second. Oh, wow. So, they, the, the third season is already out of Chosen. I have to see it. Amen. Do not be like the Nicolaitans. Jesus did not like them. Amen. So the Nicolaitans are a lot like the Jezebel spirit. You know, they like to mix things in the temple, defile the God's holy temple with, with idols, you know, things crafted from human hands and then people bow down and worship it you know like the the mat the the mary statues people doing hail mary to that uh we're told not to make a graven image and bow down to it and here we got this in the church 
the church, you know, the Catholic church. Amen. So you, you, you repent every day as we should. I repent in the morning and I repent in the evening. <laughs> I repent as I'm going around because I know that sin enters sometimes, you know, like the devil entered into uh, Peter, you know, and the devil has entered me at times where all of a sudden I'll get these thoughts out of nowhere. And I'm like, where are these thoughts coming from? I didn't, you know, I didn't want to think about any of these thoughts. They just pop right in sometimes, you know. And so I got to pray about those thoughts and repent of those those thoughts. And even when I do something outwardly, got to repent for that. So we'll stop here for today. And then tomorrow, God willing, we'll continue with... Um, with uh, 1 Samuel. I think we're, we left off Samuel. Um, I think we left. I think we read um, 11 through 15. So we'll do 15 through 16, I think. I think we stopped at. Um, we stopped where. Um, Saul and Jonathan um, and the rest of the Israelites uh, the Philistines stole their their uh, their weapons and they had no blacksmith to, to fight against them and Jonathan left Saul's presence and prayed and and said to the servant that was following him if the Philistines do this then we know that God we're in God's favor and he will protect us. And so they did that and they trusted the Lord to handle the battle weaponless. See, our battles aren't against flesh and blood, uh, but against rulers, against principalities in the heavenly, in the dark places, in the heavenly realms. Um, Jonathan um, was a man of faith in God. And this is before David had even come into the picture. So you see, when David and Jonathan became one in spirit, they truly was, they were truly one in spirit, you know, they, they truly were one in spirit. They both believed, they were, they were like-minded in the spirit. They believed that God defends us, God protects us, you know, God goes before us. Who could be against us, you know? Um, and this is before um, David comes into the picture. So that's where we left off, and I'll have to figure out where that, that is, but that's where we left off, and I think after this, um, this part, Saul does something, well, Saul has already been doing, he, he doesn't have a really good record now all of a sudden, and God um, has now appointed somebody else as to be king, a man after God's heart, so we're going to get into that, I can't wait, and I hope to see you guys uh uh, next time and um, he said thank you for being so real and such a blessing uh, to us amen not my strength but your strength God and protect them may God bless you all today amen and I hope to see you guys next time thank you again uh, Jennifer and, and anybody else who's moderating you know I know that I can it, it's it is it can get really crazy at times. And um, I'm going to pray for you guys as, when I get off of here. And I ask you guys just to pray for me. Because spiritual warfare, I notice, you know, you'll probably notice this too. When you share the word of God, trust me, the devil sees that. Because now we're taking people out of his kingdom. There are people probably watching right now who, I don't know, maybe, maybe have, are now considering, you know, accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior, which guess what Guess what that does? That takes another one out of his kingdom and he wants to go after. That's why a lot of things happen to priests and pastors, you know, and even though their, their, uh, their foley is exposed, we should pray for them because we all are sinners. We all make mistakes. We see David makes a, a, a mistake and he's a public figure. He's a king, right? You know, he's a man of God. 
can you imagine how many people were mocking and scoffing him? Uh, he's a man of God, and look, his sin is uh, exposed, his nakedness is exposed, his shame. So we should pray for those who are even in the mega churches because God did give them a job, a task, and they got distracted from the enemy. So we should always pray for them. Um, anybody who is, uh, you know, sharing the word of God, we need to pray for because the spiritual warfare is real. Like, as when I get off of here, I go to work, it's like a whole nother world. So pray for me and I'll pray for you. And I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, peace.